Hello drum school, drummer friends, hope everybody's keeping well. Today we're going to be looking at the four stroke rough, or as the Americans call it, the single stroke four. Now in my introduction, I played a four stroke rough, single stroke four, but I also played the one that has cropped up uh, in the past lot of years in the rock school book, uh, the one that has the, the double stroke in the middle. So we're going to do a little bit of a comparison uh, between the two. Ever since that happened, I think it was back in 2012, I've had all my students practice what we call the rock school rough, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, just not sure whether it's a rough because going back from time immemorial, certainly since I've been playing drums, roughs were single strokes. However, it's there and it's a technical exercise and they need to work at it. But I, cer certainly with my grade four students, uh, would get them to practice a single stroke for a real rough. So we've got the rock school rough and we've got the real rough. So let's have a look at both. Let's work at both. Let's have fun enjoying working on those. Okay, so let's start with the rock school rough. Let's remind ourselves of the sticking pattern. If you're a grade four student, you'll see this in your book. Uh, we've got right, left, left, right. And then there's a dominant note written as three grace notes and then a crotchet. Right, left, left, right, 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 Okay. And if we're doing those uh, up to speed, which is in our case, performer level students, grade four students, 75 beats per minute. So roughly... About that there. So what we'll have to remember is when we're playing either of these roughs that we're running into the beat. So we'll have to start the grace notes prior to the beat and then we land on the beat. So again... 75 BPM is maybe about that, okay? So if I'm gonna play the rock school rough again. So I'm landing on the beat with the dominant note. The good thing about working on the rock school rough is that little double. One of the things that I find with students is trying to get them to work on their double strokes so that we can then start to develop a wider range of rudiments. That's one of the tricky things. So working on this helps you to do that. And you've got your uh, initial grace note and then your double. Now that double eventually, that needs to be bounced really for it to, to flow. Uh, so... That helps you to think about, okay, I need to work on it so that I'm holding it lightly enough so that it bounces. And then, reverse, etc., etc. That's the good thing about the Rock School Rough. Don't get me wrong, it sounds like I'm knocking it uh, in favour of the, shall we say, the traditional one or the real rough. There's mileage in working on all of these. What it actually reminds me of is uh, what we used to call, and I haven't really seen it uh, uh, described this way uh, in, in a long time, but a bounce triplet. Okay, so you've got your three, three grace notes. The first note is going to be, and it's just going to start on the right, and then left, left, and then we can reverse it. But a bounce triplet, in my book, what we used to call many years ago, sounded like this. Okay, so we might have an accent at the start, but the sticking pattern is the same, and of course it can be reversed. But if we play it this way, I think uh, that is uh, another technical exercise wouldn't be a rudiment, but it'd be a technical exercise, maybe from grade three. But we can actually use that if we're playing, say for instance, we're playing a simple uh, shuffle or a simple jazz pattern. We could actually use that as a fill. Or if we're doing a 
a swing pattern and then use the same idea so that the, the little double stroke in that rough just reminds me of that and that's probably not a bad thing to have a have a think about because once we start uh, to work on rudiments where we've got some nice doubles then it develops and we can do later on uh, we can do some cool rudiments like six stroke roll uh, and obviously uh, the other short roll rudiments so anyway let's get back before we lose our track let's get back to thinking about our rock school rough and uh, how uh, we we stick that how we play that okay so again 75 beats per minute so it's roughly that. Okay, so that was a work through of our rock school rough. Let's now look at the four stroke rough, or as Americans call it, single stroke four, the traditional way of playing a four stroke rough. Again, we don't need to be playing it too fast if you're a performer level drummer, uh, grade four, grade five, uh, certainly in the grade four book, it's only 75 beats per minute, which again is roughly that. Just to say, it's actually not in the book, but I encourage all my students, I would encourage you to look at doing that too if you're working on uh, this level, performer level, okay? So we'll not go any faster. We'll just use that same sort of tempo. So the single stroke four, as the name suggests, is single strokes. We've still got a dominant note that we need to land on, on the beat. The first three notes are grace notes. <laughs> So performer level drummers, when it comes to the four stroke rough and the comparison between the two, that's essentially it. There's what I call a rock school rough and there's a single stroke four, four stroke rough that I was brought up with uh, in the traditional way of playing it. I uh, have always enjoyed playing the four stroke rough. I hope you have learnt uh, today something uh, about the benefits of working on both. I would encourage you to work on both. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next lesson, and uh, we'll see you then. Okay, bye.